Hey everybody, it's Matthew. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be learning an Alice in Chains song for Alice in Chains month. The one we're going to be learning today is Junkhead, which is off of the Dirt album in 1992. Uh, this is one of the simpler Alice in Chains songs to learn. Is it's only got a few guitar parts on it that we got to go over, but it's a pretty fun song to play and you should be able to get it under your fingers really quick once we go over it. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Forgive my positioning. Hopefully you guys will be able to see everything. I'll give you the punch zooms if you need it. So let's take a look at the verse riff here. Alright, so there is the main verse riff. It's pretty simple there. We're going to start with a power chord here on the second fret of the A and the fourth fret of the D. And remember we are in E flat tuning, so everything is actually a half note down from that. So this is, instead of being a, a B chord, this is a B flat chord. So you have that chord to start with. And that's going to be for one and a half quarter notes there. And then you're going to go down half a step to one on the A string and three on the D here. Play that chord. And then that's going to be that same length again. And then you're going to play one for just a 16th note and then jump to this third fret on the E flat or normal E, depending on however you want to think about it. Usually just thinking about it as the normal standard notes is a little bit easier to understand and then just have it tuned accordingly. So we have that chord again and then for a 16th note and then we jump. And then that note on the third fret of the E is going to be a dotted eighth note. And then we're going to go to the next half of the riff here, which we're going to be up on this, uh, down on this E string again. And we're going to make the same chord again on two of this and then four on the next string. So it's two of E and four of A. Play that chord. One and a half quarter notes again. Go down a half step to this one. One and three. And then again, we're going to have a 16th note, and then we're going to go to this uh, power chord with the open E and then second fret A. So, All right, we're going to go to the next part of the verse when the main lyrics of the verse come in. We're going to play the same thing again, but it's going to be a little bit of a change up. That change up is we're going to go to palm muted and we're going to play the exact same thing that we just did except palm muted. So here it goes. So there it is. Make sure you get your hand as close to that bridge as you can while still keeping the sound from going fully open. The palm muting on the uh, record is not super clean. Jerry has have a lot of gain on it, so there's still a lot of sound that's coming through. And some of it does vary. Some notes will get a little bit more sound through than other ones. There's sometimes where it sounds like he plays this note on this third fret a little bit less muted and Gives it a little bit of a jimmy with some vibrato. And then about the arrangement of this, is you're going to play the uh, version of the verse riff with it open four times, and then you're going to play it again four times muted. You're going to play that full riff four times, and breaking it up into a half is you have this part that's on this on these strings down here. And then you go up here for the second half and play that. And that is a full riff there. And you do that four times. So uh, each section is eight bars long. So it's you play the open part of the riff for eight bars. And then you play the palm you did one for eight bars. And then while we are talking about that, there is some lead stuff that's happening behind the open non-palm muted part of the verse that Jerry is playing behind it. On the track, it sounds like it's about 6 to 12 dB decibels lower, so it's pretty hard to hear 
So accuracy is not a huge deal with this as long as you get the main uh, parts of it down. So that lead that is happening underneath this is going to go like this. Okay, and there it is there. It's a pretty self-explanatory thing because it's not very complicated and it's slow. So the lead going on here, it's a pretty normal pattern. Uh, some of the licks repeat. They're in a different order the second time around, but that's happening throughout the whole eight bars underneath the open part of the verse riff. And so like I said, you're here on the uh, D string here and we go four and bend it halfway up and then play three. Then we go to the G string to the 6th fret, play it, bend it up, play the 5th fret, and then have this little uh, thing we do where we go down a string on the 5th fret at the end. Remember to play this 5th fret again before going down there. And then we go back to this one, bending up on the 4th fret again of the D. And then we're going to play 3 on the G string this time and give it a little bit of vibrato. And then we're gonna have that uh, kind of thing at the end to follow along with the verse riff. And we're gonna play that third fret again real quick and go up to the third fret on the E. And then we're gonna go to fourth fret A and bend it up slightly. Do that and then we'll play three two after that. And then on the record, there's some kind of sliding up thing that's happening. And I'm not sure what string it's on because it's super difficult to hear. It might be two strings at once. There's something like that going on there. And once we've done that, we're back to the one we started on again. And then we play the one up here on the uh, A string again without the sliding part. And then we're gonna play the one with the weird vibrato up here again. And then the one over here on the G string on the sixth. But instead of ending it like this, on this last one, you're gonna end it like this. So there you go for the riff. Let's get on to the chorus real quick. This might be the most difficult uh, part for most people to do, but it's not too complicated of a riff to figure out. So let's go to it. All right, so there's the verse riff there. There's some interesting things happening there. The most difficult part there is uh, going to that pick part and then doing the chord change from the G to this chord right here, which is an E chord. So let's go through it slow here, but it's not too complicated. We're gonna play that this A chord first here. So open A and then second fret on your D and G. And we're gonna play it like this. So the total of four strikes there, you got one eighth note and then three sixteenth note ones. Now it's important you go down and then up, down, up on it. So you can get the chord chains here to this one after that, which is a third fret on the A, second fret on the D, open G, and then third fret on the B. And then that holds out for a while there. And then we go to the G chord here, which is third fret, on the E and we are muting the A on purpose here. So make sure the, your finger is touching that, keep it muted. And then open D, open G, third fret B, third fret on the other E. So those three sixteenth notes there. And then we're gonna pick out the third fret on the E, third fret B, and then open G. Switch to the E power chord. And then this little walk down here, which is third fret D, second fret D open. And you can pull off that two there to get the open D that way. 
and then third fret on the A, back to open D, third fret B, and then in, bend it up halfway, and then you turn back around. So our whole riff is gonna be like this, let's do this one slow. And then you would turn back around after that, or of course get to the end of the chorus and just stop there with that. And then go back into the verse. So we have the verse open, verse palm muted, then chorus, and then we're gonna do all three of those sections again. So eight bar, verse open, eight bar, verse palm muted, eight bar, chorus, and then we play all those again, just the same way we, I just showed you guys in order. But after the chorus, the sec, after the second chorus though, we're gonna go to a bridge-like section, and that is going to be a different kind of thing here. So we're gonna go up here on the neck actually, pretty high, and we're going to play this fun little guy here, and I'll show you guys how to do it right now. Actually that 12th fret note is actually the end of it. So we're going to have 14th fret here, uh, 8th note, 16th note, 16th note. And then walk up on 16th notes to 13 of the B, 15 of the E. So we hold that up for a while, play 15 again twice and slide up. That's the way you want to do it. You want to play it twice, slide up 17, slide back, play 15 twice again, slide up, and then go to 13 on the E. And then we're gonna have a walk down, 13, 12. And then 15, 13, 15 B. 12th of the G. And then that's the whole pattern. And then the other thing that's going on is the same thing is being played two octaves down. So we're gonna be down here on the neck on the low E. And we're gonna play the same pattern here. And that's gonna start on the low E here on the fifth fret, then third fret, then of the A, then fifth fret of the D. And then we're gonna play the same pattern again there. The rest of it goes fifth fret, slide up to seven, back, slide up again, go to the third fret on the D. And then we play the same walk down there, which is three, two, go to the A string, five, three, five, and then three on the low E. And then you play it there. And then you can also do a middle octave if you want to. That's not noticeably there in the mix. There could be one though, but I'm not sure. So if you do want to stack all three octaves, you have that option. You play the exact same pattern that you do up here, but instead you're gonna start start on this 12th fret of the A instead. And so that bridge section again, that's eight bars. So you're gonna play once again the whole riff four times. And then after we've done that, we're gonna go back into the verse again, verse open, verse palm muted, chorus, and then the song ends with playing that open verse one more time, and then that's the end of the song, Junkhead. It's a pretty simple song. Like I said, there's only a few parts you gotta know to figure that one out. Uh, real quick before we go, let me remind you guys about one tiny little lead part that is in, hidden in there in the song. It's not really hidden, it's pretty obvious where it is, but it's the only time there's any like real lead happening in the song, and it happens around, uh, it's bar 36 on tab that I'm giving you guys, I believe. And it's just this quick thing he does in the second half of the 36th bar. It's just this little guy here. And there's a couple ways you can play it. So let's look at the easy way first. And by the way, all these notes are gonna be played as triplets. Be very careful with that, keep that in mind. Let's do the easy version first. And then that bend gets held out through part of the next bar after it. So their easy way here is we're gonna start 10th fret of the G string. And then we're gonna play 10, 12, B. And we're gonna play 10, E. 
and then we're gonna play the 12th fret E and start bending immediately. Until we get to the top of that bend. And then the hard way to do it is to jump over here to 14, 16 after you play the 10th fret here on the G. So there's both ways that you can play that little lick there that happens at bar 36. Other than that guys, that's basically it for the song. It's a really simple pattern. I will include the arrangement for you guys as well so you can track the parts of the song and where they're supposed to be played if you want the shorthand version like that. Anyway guys, that's going to do it for this lesson on a Junkhead from Alice in Chains. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson here. Go ahead and start practicing and getting that under your fingers. Learning that chorus riff and how to do that stuff is a really important thing for learning how to play Jerry Cantrell parts because he has a lot of ones where there are chord shape changes like that where you got to do some quick changes and then go to arpeggiated parts and then jump to more chords and do things like that. He does that kind of stuff all the time so it's best to get started on something easy like that to understand how to play his parts. Uh, anyway, like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed that video. Leave a comment down below and as always don't forget to click the bell so you guys know when a new video is going to be out. And I will see you guys next time in another video. Have a good one.